Okay, the next question is from Alice. Does DHEA work as well as testosterone for libido and all brain fog memory issues? So I think it does. Um, so here's the thing about DHEA versus testosterone. First of all, from a very practical point of view, we can't write for testosterone because it's a controlled substance. So um, controlled substances, with, with an exception, require an in-person visit. Um, the exception is that in many states, there's a COVID exception, but that, that exception is going away. And so sort of we decided uh, when we built this not to sort of build this based on the COVID exceptions because we don't want to start somebody on a medication and all of a sudden the rules change and now, oh, sorry, can't do that anymore. Um, that's kind of bait and switch and not really fair to people. So um, we follow the rules um, that uh, exist outside of the emergency declarations for COVID. And so we can't write testosterone because it's a controlled substance and that requires an in-person visit. However, the DHA works really well and the DHA gets broken down into estrogen and testosterone within 30 minutes of taking it. So this is a common misconception. People think, gosh, I don't need DHEA, I want testosterone. Well, it's not really acting as DHEA, it's just a vehicle to get testosterone into you. The nice thing about DHEA and the doses that we prescribe is that it's not gonna get your testosterone levels sort of, we're not gonna overshoot them. Testosterone is important for women um, and it's, it's, it's really an overlooked uh, source of problems for perimenopausal menopausal women because testosterone levels at 50 are about half as high as they were when you were 30. And that's a big difference and it can really affect you. And so there, you do need, um, or a lot of women need testosterone replacement. And DHA is just a really convenient way to do that. Um, number one, it's not a controlled substance. Um, number two, in reasonable doses, you're not going to overshoot the testosterone. So it's going to get that testosterone right in that sweet spot of that, um, you know, mid range level of where it's supposed to be in a normal, healthy young woman, um, which is what we're shooting for. You are not going to get um, bodybuilder uh, levels of testosterone. It can be done with DHA. Actually, there are people in the body in the bodybuilding um, community that take massive doses of DHA. Um, and it does get their testosterone levels way high, uh, but that's not what we're shooting for. So, um, and unfortunately because of that on the internet, there's a lot of these side effects you read about with DHEA, but it really has to do with the fact that people abuse, in my opinion, abuse, but they use huge doses of DHEA to really drive their testosterone levels to sort of really, really high, you know, more than normal physiology would be. And that ends up causing side effects. The DHA that we prescribe, we don't we don't prescribe this kind of doses. And so um, it will get the testosterone up to a nice level, but it's not going to overshoot it. So it's really a safer way to do it. You tend to get the benefits with the testosterone without having to worry about the side effects. When you're using pure testosterone therapy, either as, as cream or pellets or injections, you've got to be really careful about overshoot and so that you have to care you have to follow levels all the time it's a really tricky drug to do right um and so that's really another big advantage of the dha it's just it's easy it works it's easy and it's hard to mess up um, as long as you don't go too high on the dosage uh, dha actually is a banned substance um, for some professional athletes so if you're a competitive bodybuilder um you know you, you want to look into your organization um, and the reason is because it works. So, um, but again, um, you know, we're not going for uh, bodybuilding doses of DHA. We're just trying to get you feeling like you did when you were younger. Okay, we don't have any more questions.